Hey lovely people, I thought it would be a good idea to do an update about my film on how to communicate with a submarine. The obvious solution is for a submarine to surface, raise an antenna above sea level, then use VHF radio transmissions. However, a submarine is most vulnerable when on the surface. During the Cold War, nuclear-powered submarines were developed that could stay submerged for months. To communicate with hidden submarines, a new radio system that can reach the bottom of the ocean was needed. The military came up with the idea of a very low-frequency radio system. Since I made the original film, things have changed in interesting ways. The Wisconsin and Michigan ELF station has closed. You know, it's hard to believe if World War III would have ever started, it would have started right here. And the DARPA research team are experimenting with using blue lasers which will penetrate seawater to speak to the subs. But I intended to tell you this long, convoluted Cold War mystery about VLF and ELF and why I thought that the US no longer use VLF to communicate with their submarines. But it apparently isn't true, so I need your help to get to the bottom of the mystery. Are you a radio person who can actually explain to me and the rest of the viewers what I'm getting slightly wrong here? Let me explain. As far as I know, and I'm not an expert in the field, but VLF, very low frequencies, uses band D of the ionosphere for long range radio propagation. VLF radio waves can travel thousands of miles and can penetrate salt water up to about 130 meters. I'm actually surprised by that depth. I thought it was much shallower than that, but that's the latest information. And after years of using VLF, the US and other nations changed to ELF, or extremely low frequency. Why? They found that electromagnetic waves in the ELF frequency range can penetrate seawater to a depth of hundreds of meters, allowing signals to be sent to submarines at their safer operating depths. Building an ELF transmitter is a formidable challenge as they have to work at incredibly long wavelengths. The US Navy system, Seafarer, operates at 76 Hz. Well, here was my theory, and I'm sure some of it is correct, but I'm not sure what is wrong. If you can control the planet's ionosphere by turning it on, and off for radio propagation, you can stop your enemy communicating with their submarines, saying launch the missiles or whatever they talk about. And that was exactly what US and probably Russia, the Soviet Union, were trying to do. In the 1960s, the US exploded atomic weapons in the ionosphere to stop enemies using VLF and speaking to their submarines. They carried out tests trying to make a charged area that would block radio propagation from the South Atlantic all the way up to Ascension Island. And it worked, but the effect didn't last very long, so you'd have to explode much more atomic bombs in space to block the radio. So that's not really going to work. 
what they wanted was a switch that could switch on or off the ionosphere. So they built this place, HARP, and that could mess with the ionosphere electronically from the ground with a switch. But we don't really know if HARP works. It probably does, but not in the way they expected. So that gets me back to my story. What I saw was VLF stations being phased out and ELF being introduced. ELF doesn't use the ionosphere. It propagates the radio waves through the Earth. The whole Earth is the antenna. And in fact, a signal comes up through the Earth, through the seabed, roughly, to the submarine, I assume. So the United States now had a guaranteed way to communicate with their submarines that wasn't messed around if they turned off the ionosphere. And that's my story. But it's not right. <laughs> because one of America's biggest ELF stations, the one at Clam Lake in Wisconsin, actually closed down. But they still have VLF. There's VLF antenna all over the planet. Some in Hawaii, some on the East Coast, Lots in Britain, obviously lots in Russia, there's a big station in Australia and even in Antarctica. So, viewers, what am I not quite getting right here? Why did they close down ELF, which isn't messed around by ionospheric switching, and they've still kept VLF? Answers on a postcard or in the description. Can you solve the mystery of why ELF went away? So I don't know everything, but you do. And that's why I say the truth is out there.